Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be going on an adventure in Space Engine, and we're going to explore this beautiful triple star system known as the Orion's Belt. We're going to go take a look at what's happening there, we're going to learn more about these stars, and most importantly, we're going to go and try to find some interesting planets out there. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> But before we go anywhere, let's actually figure out where we're going. So let me just actually increase the brightness so that it's visible a little bit better. And we maybe are going to get rid of some of these stars that we, we don't really need. And so we're going to the so-called Orion's Nebula and specifically the three most famous stars in that nebula. These are known to pretty much every culture in the world. And uh, in, in English, it's known as the Orion's Belt. And uh, other languages, it's known as some kind of a other belt, mostly because they are practically in a straight line and very, very close to each other in terms of distance. But uh, these three stars actually have Arabic names because the Arab astronomers discovered them a long time ago and gave them these really, really specific names. So from left to right, this right here is the star by the name of uh, Mintaka. Usually it's actually this way, so I'm going to maybe flip because I'm facing the wrong direction. So the right one is Mintaka, the middle one is known as Aonitam, and the left one is known as Aonitak. Now, what's interesting is that these are not actually just three separate stars. I actually want to zoom in here just to show you how much stuff is going on in this particular region. So you can see there's a, a lot of various nebulae, a lot of various uh, stellar nurseries where a lot of new stars are formed. And for this reason, these three stars are actually very, very powerful. They're actually relatively new. They haven't been created that long ago. They only have maybe a few million years in them, which is nothing in stellar terms. And most importantly, these are actually creations from the Orion uh, nursery. So these are the stars that will probably go supernova in the next million years or so, or few million years, and will then be responsible for creating other beautiful stars similar to our sun. But even though they're so well aligned and they look so beautiful together, they're actually really far away from each other. From our perspective, they look like three stars in a line. In reality, it's not very simple. The first one, the closest to us, is... Alnitak, and this particular star um, is approximately 817 light years away from us, even though in the game here it says 1262. So here is actually where we get to a point where we need to talk a little bit about how we measure distances to these stars. Usually it's done with something uh, known as stellar parallax, but because these stars are so far away, because they're actually not moving very much in comparison to um, our own star, it's very difficult to estimate the distances. So it's anywhere between 800 to 1200 light years away from us. The second uh, farthest star is Mintaka, this is the right star, and the third one is Aonitam, it's in the middle. So they're not actually very close to each other. There is several hundred light years between each of them because they're actually, as you'll see in a second, are not really in a straight line at all. So there, there they are. There is the first one, the second one, and the third one. Now that's how it's portrayed in Space Engine. In reality, they're actually even farther away from each other. But anyway, let's start with the first star here, Alnitak which is obviously surrounded by this beautiful Orion Nebula. Now let's go to it, let's see what it's composed of, and most importantly, let's see if there are actually any planets around it. And while we're moving closer to it, um, let's start by actually discovering that it's not a single star. There's actually three stars inside of this region. So this is a triple star, and you'll see the all three stars in a few seconds. There we go. All right, so, Let's accelerate time a little bit so you can actually see them move around one another. And so this is what Alnitak looks like. Now you, you can kind of see that something is happening to the right side here. And that's because there is actually two stars orbiting around one another very fast here. And this is, a st that's, that's our main companion, the third star. So this here is known as Alnitak B. 
And inside of here, you'll find Alnutac AA and Alnutac AB. Altogether, these stars are actually very bright, something like 100,000 times of the luminosity of our own sun. And they're ridiculously bright, ridiculously powerful, very, very massive. Each of them is a lot more massive than our own sun. So, for example, this one right here, Alnitak AA, is a blue supergiant with about 33 masses of our own sun. Meaning that when it explodes, when it goes supernova, it's very likely it's going to create a black hole. And what's even more interesting is that there might even be the fourth star, so-called Alnitak C, but it hasn't really been confirmed yet, so we don't really know if it exists. But this is how little we know about these star systems, because measuring things about them and even trying to estimate distance is actually kind of difficult. Anyway, so that's the first star of Orion's Belt, or I guess the first three stars, three confirmed stars. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the rightmost, Mintaka. Now, Mintaka is even more mysterious. We think that Mintaka has at least four stars, and you'll see them in a few seconds here. Actually, I can probably do this a little bit smarter by going to this right here and just showing you each of the individual stars the following way. So we're going to start with Mintaka AB, a very, very, very bright and very powerful uh, blue subgiant that's about 22 and a half masses of the sun. And it has a partner. It has another partner known as Mintaka AA that actually is two stars. So it gets a little bit more complicated with Mintaka. So there is the um, blue subgiant. And right here we have another two stars. One of them is a blue main sequence star. A type O blue, sequ uh, blue main sequence star that I'm going to show you in a second. And the other one is another blue main sequence star that's uh, type B. So all of these stars, once again, are very powerful, very, very massive, with the smallest one being something like eight masses of the sun. And because there is so much going on in this particular system, and as you can see, these two stars are actually very, very close to each other. They're practically touching. They're like literally sharing their own uh, their masses with each other because there's so much going on it's actually very difficult for us to study both the distance and the composition of the system and the fourth star is right there this is a mintaka ca another blue sequence star now we think that there might be even more stars here there might be actually even five stars because there's so much uh, interaction going on that we don't really know the exact number of uh, stars in the Mintaka system. All we know about them is that they're, once again, very bright, very powerful. And as you can see, there is actually another star right here that's created in Space Engine known as Mintaka CB. So I can actually show you all of them by clicking on uh, this button right here. And we'll get to see all five of them aligned in a row. So there they are, the five stars of Mintaka in Space Engine. And altogether, they create a very beautiful, very bright system, a part of the Orion's Belt. And this is the rightmost uh, star system. All right. Now, what about the last one, the middle star? And I kept it for the last for one simple reason. Al Nilam, as it's known, is most likely the farthest of the bunch the farthest from our planet Earth at the distance of about 1340 light years away. And it's actually a single star. But this single star, as you can kind of maybe see if you squint your eyes, has things moving around it. And those things, as you can imagine, are the planets. Now, in reality, we don't know if this star has planets. In Space Engine, though, it does. And as a matter of fact, there's quite a lot of planets around this star. And each of those has quite a lot of moons as well. Now, in reality, this is very, very possible. It's very possible for this blue luminous supergiant to have quite a lot of different uh, planets. And it's also very possible that Space Engine represents this very, very well. Now, as you can see, the mass here is actually tremendously large. It's like 136 masses of the sun. Although, in reality, just a little bit less than that. 
Uh, but what's more interesting about this system is how much stuff there's going on here. So if I accelerate time, you'll see how many things start orbiting around the star, how many things are actually moving in the system. Now this right here, this bright object, this is actually uh, a so-called hot Jupiter. This is a gas giant that many different star systems have that is a little bit close to the star, so it gets very, very hot. Its temperature, if I click on it, if I can actually reach it, that is, uh, is something like 2,200 degrees Celsius. And it has a lot of moons, but all of those moons are also very, very scorched. And each of the planets here is actually maybe a little bit too hot for comfort. Most of them have a temperature of over 400 degrees Celsius and are much, much hotter than our own planet Venus, which is the hottest in our solar system. But this right here, this is that hot Jupiter by the name of Alnilam 1. As you can see, it has a lot of different moons. All of the moons are also very scor scorched. And some of them actually have their own uh, way of orbiting. They're going against the flow. But let's just take a look at one of these just to see what's going on here on the surface. Because I'm always curious to find out what happens to all of these various procedurally generated objects in Space Engine. And sometimes we get, we get very lucky. Sometimes we can even find the life on them. So maybe if we are kind of lucky, we might be able to find life in the Orion's belt. Oh, the, ch the chance of that happening is pretty low. So that's the first asteroid, uh, asteroid moon that is, of Aonil M1. Let's go to some of the other planets. Let's check them out by basically doing this. We're gonna click this button and go through each of these individual planets and discover um, what they have on them and if their moons have life. So this one is very hot as well, 1793 degrees Celsius. All of the moons are super hot as well. You can kind of go through them individually. All of them are asteroids. This here is also a little bit too hot, so it probably looks very similar to the ones we've seen just now. This, however, is a little bit different. This is a scorched desert with a temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius and it has one moon on it that also has a temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius. So if you've ever wondered what a planet with a thousand degrees Celsius uh, atmosphere looks like, you're about to find out. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of these that have a very, very high temperature. So this is a scorched desert planet. And you just saw a lunar eclipse from its moon. But let's actually maybe take a look at the surface here. Let's see what it actually feels like to stand on the surface of this planet when it's super, super scorched, super hot, 1000 degrees Celsius hot. Now, I don't know what this blue stuff is. For a second there, I thought it was water. It's clearly not water. Yeah, this is a very, very hot planet. Extremely hot, as a matter of fact. So hot that whatever is happening here is probably beyond our comprehension. We have not seen any planet that's similar in composition and in temperature. Now, all of these planets are a little bit too hot, but then if we come to the planet number 9, you'll notice that it has a very comfortable 26 degrees Celsius temperature, and all of its moons are actually also relatively warm asteroids. And this one here is a temperate Selena, which is... Selena is a name for... Uh, is a word for moon, and normally just means a moon-like object. So let's take a look at this particular planet that seems to be relatively comfortable and see what it has on the surface. And unfortunately, there is no atmosphere. So this is not a habitable world, not a world we can survive on, and not a world that will have any liquid water because it lacks atmosphere. Very unfortunate. I was hoping to find something we can maybe live on. And the moon that it has, which is right here, known as Alnilam 9.1, is also, unfortunately, very similar, lacks atmosphere, lacks any habitability for us, so is not a world we're going to be interested in, in any time in the future. Well, anyway, so that's kind of all I wanted to do in this video. And by the way, this right here, what you see right there, this red spot, this is the so-called Cone Nebula. A nebula that I've actually previously mentioned in one of the videos where I, dis uh, where I explored different nebulas, but you can kind of see it really well if you click on it here. It's a diffuse cone nebula right there. 
But anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to explore the Orion's Belt, show you the stars and the procedurally generated planets in Space Engine, and most importantly, tell you about these three very interesting stars and how they're actually really, really far away from each other, and how even though they look like in a straight line from our planet, the reality is a lot more complicated than that. So that's the most famous, most well-known three stars in our night sky. And now you know a little bit more about Aonitak, Aonilam, and Mintaka. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space stuff and wants to learn through video games. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.